Way back in the early 1990s, the first computer that I bought on my own was a Centris 650. Now, a Centris 650 is an interesting machine because it shipped with the Wombat motherboard. That motherboard was used by a number of other machines um, later uh, and concurrent to the Centris 650. Those machines had different capabilities and they were activated by changes on the motherboard. When the Centris 650 was in market, it had a 25 megahertz 68040 processor with the math unit, which is great. It also had the ability to put in a lot of RAM, so it either shipped with four or eight megabytes on the board, plus it had SIM expansion up to 128 megabytes plus. And so this is a pretty capable machine for the time. It had three new bus slots, um, and it also had VRAM expansion. Now, what I'm interested in are some of these other configurations. As I said, we had a 25 megahertz LCO40, but that, sorry, 28 megahertz, 25 megahertz 68040 with the math unit, not an LCO40. And um, interestingly enough, you could change the clock oscillator to make it go faster. And that's what we're gonna take a look at in this video. You can see that this is running at 25 megahertz, and that 25 megahertz is governed by a oscillator chip that's on the board. That's a 12 and a half megahertz oscillator. You can see that 12 and a half megahertz oscillator sitting there, and that's what makes the computer tick. It's possible to change the speed, however. This is an output enabled oscillator, and so you could disable it and introduce another oscillator to speed up the computer, and that's exactly what was figured out back in the day by the clock chipping geniuses. Um, Mark Schreier is one of those guys. He's uh, we had lots of conversation way, way back in the day as we went through some of these changes to these motherboards. Um, he's still around, and uh, his website that talks about clock chipping on these machines is still active, and so I'll link to that in the description. The Wombat motherboard was used in a number of different machines, and you could configure it in order to meet the specifications of those machines. You could change the clock speed, that's on this guy right here, 12 and a half megahertz for a Centra 650, and it's a higher clock speed, and you can get that by changing that oscillator. Um, and then, you know, clock chipping was only one bit of it. You also need to make some changes to the motherboard to accommodate some of the other features. For instance, you could put a 20 megahertz oscillator in there, but that 20 megahertz oscillator would actually cause the serial ports to fail, so back in here. Uh, and it turns out that you can make adjustments to the motherboard by moving some, uh, by adding and removing some resistors to convince this motherboard that it should support faster speeds in the serial ports. And so we're going to do both of those modifications. There's a couple of different techniques that you can use to uh, make this change. One of them is to use a test clip. And this is actually kind of cool. So you can build a socket on the top of this thing and then clip it and then remove it when you don't want it. The other option is to take the socket and just solder it right down onto the existing clip. So don't remove, or onto the existing chip. Don't remove that. Just put this thing on it and then make adjustments to the wires so that you end up with your uh, traces going in the right place. This is ground over here. And up here is the output enable. So right now this is turned on um, because it's floating, but if you were to ground those two together or connect those two together, that would effectively disable the chip on the motherboard. And that's going to be what we're going to do either with the clip or with the socket. Way, way, way back when, um, I did this with the clip and it was very effective. Um, and in fact, what I discovered is that in using the clip, it meant that I could, um, enable the PowerPC upgrade card, which I, I do have. Um, and you, the speed that 80 megahertz, sorry, 40 megahertz that I could get out of the motherboard for the 68040 wouldn't work with the PowerPC upgrade card that I had. And so I had to back it off a little bit. So it meant that I had two oscillators that I would switch between. I actually built a switch that sat on top of this thing and would allow me to enable two different clock speeds. Of course, using the clip meant that you obstructed this um, uh, new bus slot. So, you know, you have to make a decision about what you're willing to accept. The clip is actually kind of cool because you can use it, but if you need to get into the new bus, new bus slot, then you can take the clip out, slows the machine down, but it does get you access to that third port. 
In order to take advantage of the high speed that we're going to get from that 20 megahertz oscillator we're going to pop on there, we need to modify the motherboard so that the serial ports don't fail. Now, if you take a look at the motherboard here, there's R152, and then near it is R151. On a Center 650 motherboard, which this is, R151 has a 300 ohm resistor sitting in there, and on a Quadra 800 board, R152 has a 1.2 kilo ohm resistor. So what we need to do to convert this motherboard into a Quadra 800 motherboard is to get rid of that resistor and install a new resistor there. And that's what we're gonna do. These things are like dust and it can be difficult to spot them uh, when you put them on the board. So I've got one here. I don't know if you can see it there, but it's uh, it's tiny. I mean, it's microscopic. This is going to go on 152. So I'll set it over there so I know where it is over by 152. And what I'd like to do is to just make sure that that's ready to go with a little bit of uh, solder. So I'm going to put some solder on there. I'm going to change my hand because uh, I'm not really fond of working with my left hand when soldering. Yeah, that, that goes right up. That's great. So we'll put a little bit more, just, just a little whisker. Make sure we got a nice heavy gob there. Cool. Right. Now, let's get that resistor and put it where it belongs. See if I can hold it down, all right? Yeah. Let's get that flatter. Just go up right on there. There we go. Nice. Tune that up a little bit. Cool. So now we've got to get 151 off. And 151, um, we need to, I don't think I'm going to hit it with the braid. See if we can get uh, some of that out of there. Maybe not necessary, but. go. See if we can push it off. Yeah. Well, I mean, we'll pry it a little bit. Let's see if we can lift it off. Maybe some glue in there. Here we go. All, the, all gone. But I don't want to get rid of this thing because, you know, I may decide one day to put this back. Who knows? Well, let's give it a little bit of a wash over here. And that will be that. We'll flip it over. We'll put the board back together and we'll see what happens when we turn it on. The clock chip we can add uh, really at any time. Um, and so I just want to put the board back together and prove that we do have a different machine here. So um, I will clean that up. Let's clean up the goo, get rid of that. All right, so all we did was change resistors and let's see where we are. So if we look at the system profile, everything booted up and ta-da! It is now a Quadra 650. You'll see it still says it's a 68040 at 25 megahertz. That's because we haven't changed anything on the, um, uh, we, we haven't done anything with the clock, but that's what's coming next. So the thing we've got to do now is to build that clip that can go on top of the oscillator. We talked about the different configurations of the motherboard. And um, as we've seen, this motherboard will 
if you just make the resistor swap, we'll turn this into a Quadra 650. Hmm. But remember when the comparison was made, it was about a Centra 650 and a Quadra 800. Well, it turns out that there's an additional change that you can make right in here. And this, um, this pin header, uh, number one and number five, these are an LED. And the LED is indicated here. So you can see this LED right there, and that will turn on. Now on the Centris, this is uh, in the Quadra, this uh, LED illuminates the LED in the front. There's a little light pipe that kind of kind of goes that way through it. But on the 800, it's a vertical mounting. And so this doesn't mean anything. And so you have a jumper, like you pick up number one and number five, and you send that off to the uh, LED and that will let you know it's on. But you can also bridge two and three, and that's part of that um, Quadra 800 configuration, where you need to bridge two and three, so put a jumper on there, and this will become a Quadra 800. There's no advantage to us to doing it. Um, we've already fixed the serial port problem by um, switching the resistors, and so I'm not going to enable that here. Here's the oscillator, and you can see it's got this dot right there in the, cor in the corner, and that indicates the output enable pin. That we need to ground in order to shut it off. It's got a ground down here, and then it has the power and the signal on the other side. We're going to align those with these oscillators. You can see I've got a 19.666, I've got a 20, and there's that black dot that's down in the corner right there, right? You can see that there. So that black dot, we need to line up with that. Now, that surface mount configuration, those pins are a lot closer than the pins on here. In fact, these line up with the outer corners of this socket that I'm going to use. All right. So what I need to do is to take this clip and I need to put that uh, on top of there, but I need to connect. I'm going to center it on there is what I'm going to do when I put it on. This pin right here, whoops, this guy, and this guy need to be connected, which I'll do up in here. And then I need to take this pin right here and run it to the corner of that socket. I need to take this pin, run it to the other corner of the socket. I need to take, actually this one doesn't matter because we're gonna, doesn't, doesn't mean anything. Um, this guy is gonna go to the outer corner and then this guy's gonna go to the outer corner of the socket. And what that will do is allow the socket, put some wires in there so I can open and close this. I need to make sure there's enough play in there so that when I open it, I'm gonna stick it on there. And when we center it and put it on, then we can adjust the, um, the oscillators. So let's give that a try. To make these easier to manage, I'm just gonna take this end and bend it over. All right, and then we can Clip it on there. Bend it over there. I'll just uh, give it a squeeze. And it'll stay. We'll apply the solder. There's one. Remember, it doesn't have to be pretty, it just has to stay there. solder on there. There we go. There's one. Still hot. All right. Now I gotta jump the uh, pins in here. So I will upgrade this little guy here, a little too big. We'll try that again.
Okay, maybe I'll put it on the inside. Remember, this is not about pretty. It's just about making contact between the two. Now, this has to be, just looking at this, this has to be in the alignment this way on the board. So I'm just going to mark this red so I remember. I always put this toward the front of the board. All right. We'll solder those. Okay. Now, we need to put these on. If you remember, this one goes to nowhere. This one goes to that pin right there. Put some solder on, the, on there. Put some tin on there. Okay, there's one. I'll flip it over. This guy goes here. This was supposed to be pretty, but it's not. Whatever. Looks nice. All right, so now we have this thing put together. We've got uh, that pin going there, that pin going there, this pin going there, and those two, those two are bridged. So that means that we can put it onto the motherboard and that will allow us to uh, overclock the system. There we go. Yeah, that sounds nice. Okay. All right, so I believe... Oh, that, yeah, oh, that's better. That's like clipped in. Nice and snug. Just checking to make sure it's down all the way, all the way around. That's better. Okay, so let's go for broke. Uh, well, we'll go for this slightly smaller one. This is a 19.66 megahertz chip. I can pop it in here. Make sure it lines up. Okay. Now we can put some power to it and see what we get. system profiler and it tells us that we are now quadra 650 at 39 megahertz 
How's that? Now you could also add a, um, a fan to the CPU. Some folks have reported that was successful uh, or was required because the CPU might get hot in these uh, rarefied air. <laughs> um, I did that eventually on my other unit because I had also added the PowerPC card. And so that's something that we'll try on another day. But for now, this is pretty nice to have this kind of speed boost. It's uh, nearly double the speed that it was before and um, didn't take a whole lot of effort. Just making that little clip and swapping that resistor out. And there it is running at 40 megahertz. So I've made that little switch up. Is it worth it? Well, it certainly was way back in, uh, you know, 1993, 94, when we were playing around with these machines and you wanted every last little bit of juice out of them. And even today, I think it's a pretty easy upgrade that you can make to a machine. Um, just know that if you're going to go for broke at 40 or 41 or 42 megahertz, um, you will need to change that surface mount resistor on the motherboard to be able to um, use those serial ports in the back. Hope that this has been useful to you. Um, leave a comment. I think, and please, <laughs> my soldering is not awesome. I know it. Uh, so don't bother commenting about that because uh, you won't be teaching me anything. Thanks.